Okay, so next up um, we have uh, Dirk with Layar, um, who, yeah, that helps if I move, okay. <laughs> and whenever you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dirk Roten. I'm the CTO of uh, Layer. Uh, Layer is an uh, augmented reality company that has now been around for uh, nearly five years. Uh, we're having our fifth birthday in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, here's my uh, Twitter handle if you want to uh, follow me or ask me questions. So uh, just for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Layer, uh, I'll give a brief overview of what we do. And uh, my talk is going to be specifically about looking at what we've done to uh, uh, make the augmented reality stuff that we're doing on smartphones possible also on, uh, on Glass, on Google Glass specifically. Uh, so just to quickly recap what you can do with the layer platform, uh, on the one hand we have these uh, geo layers. Uh, these are some pretty old uh, screenshots uh, from uh, nearly five years ago. Um, so overlaying content on top of uh, reality inter uh, using just the geolocation, your position, the compass, uh, knowing which direction you're looking at. You can add uh, just simple points of interest, but you can also add uh, uh, 3D models or augment the world with, uh, with, new, with buildings that are to be built or that have, uh, have been built in the past. Um, Next to that, we have uh, what we call vision layers. Uh, so those are layers uh, that are actually uh, anchored to uh, uh, using fe natural feature tracking, anchored to 2D uh, images like uh, packaging or magazines or uh, pages of a newspaper. Um, and uh, in the in the in the smartphone, uh, it's used currently a lot for interactive print. So simply overlaying videos or buttons or links to uh, digital content linked to what, what, what you're seeing. You can also add 3D objects. So, for example, a car manufacturer on an ad could uh, show a 3D model of the car so that people could actually uh, see how the car would look like. Um, we have a layer creator. That's the content creation tool uh, that is most used. Uh, we have more than 85,000 uh, creators that have already used this tool. Next to that, we have APIs. Uh, that allow developers to actually uh, use a little bit more capabilities of our platform that are not available in the layer creator because they require a little bit of programming uh, also on the server side. And with these APIs, um, there's uh, about 30 to 35,000 developers that have created content using our APIs. The layer creator is a really simple drag and drop interface. Uh, you upload the images that you want. So this is really specifically for vision layers. You upload the, the pages that you want to augment or the images that you want to augment. You drag and drop stuff on top of it, uh, basically, and then you, you hit the publish button and it's available. And as soon as the user hits the scan button or scans the content, then uh, uh, that will be shown. We have an SDK for layers, so you can embed the technology in your own app and it will display the content that you've created using the creator or using, using our API and that SDK works for geo layers as well as vision layers. And you can link the two, so you can actually start a geo experience from, from a page. So you, can, you could actually scan a page and you could from there jump into an augmented experience of things around you or show a, a 3D model of something uh, standing in front of you. So basically the, those are the tools that we have. Uh, what have we done for Google Glass? Um, Glass is a little bit a different, a different kind of beast. So we really decided to rethink uh, how layers should work on Google Glass uh, because uh, as we saw it, it's a little screen sitting in the corner of your eye and it's not really uh, a see-through experience. You, could, you can do a see-through experience if you really want to, but it's basically a little informational screen that's sitting on the, in the corner of your, of your view field and most of your view field is, is not covered or is, is not in... Yeah, you don't have that, that, that thing in front of what you're actually looking at. So basically, we've, uh, we've used the GDK, the Glass Development Toolkit, to actually create uh, the application, uh, recreate the application. We've actually changed the user interface quite dramatically to fit uh, the UI of Glass, which is very simple. Uh, there's very little interactions you can do with Glass. You can't actually touch somewhere or, or click somewhere. That, that will be possible with something like Meta, where it can actually see your gestures and see where you're pointing at. But that's very difficult with Glass. Um, so uh, it's not just an AR view. We've actually optimized it so that uh, the content can be that you create for layer is also useful for people who are using Glass. 
uh, you can access all the content on the Layer platform. So basically anything you've published for Layer is also working in the Glass app. Um, and I'll come to the limitations in a minute. Uh, there are some limitations. So basically uh, anything you've done with the Layer Creator will work there, uh, but also your Geo Layers and also um, uh, QR codes, for example. And uh, what we've... Uh, what we thought of is, uh, okay, how are you going to start an experience, an AR experience? Are you going to install an app and then say, hey, I want to launch that app? Uh, that's not really the Glass model. Uh, Google has uh, really created a very, you know, uh, Robert Scoble said it during the keynote, it's pretty limited in terms of what it can do. And it's not, it's not a full, uh, yeah, it's pretty far away from what we're used to in terms of smartphones, where you pick an app, you download it, and, and you've got loads of apps, and you can choose which app you want to use right now. It's voice commands, it's a list of commands. And the most important command here that, that we've come up with is, okay, Glass, scan this. So basically, that's all you have to say. Okay, Glass, scan this. Uh, it will start your experience. It's not layer branded. It's just a gen generic command. Scan this. So I'm going to show you a quick video of how it works. In 2009, we showed you how reality could be augmented with a smartphone. Now, we can show you how reality can be augmented with Google Glass. Here's how it works. Just say, OK, Glass. Scan this. And in just a matter of seconds, you're experiencing augmented reality in a true heads-up fashion, right on your Google Glass. In this real estate example, you can tap to view more about a home for sale or rent. Or just swipe to browse through each listing in your area. With Layer for Glass, you can discover more about the world around you. Like seeing movie trailers play right on the poster. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard our non-stop service from New York to London. You can use Glass to view any campaign published on the Layer platform, like interactive magazines with videos that play right on the page. You can view any content available on Layer with Google Glass, including incredible 360-degree panoramic experiences. Visit layer.com slash glass to download Layer for Google Glass. Or create your own glass content with the Layer Creator at layer.com slash creator. Okay, so uh, this is a session about uh, SDKs for wearables. So where's the SDK? Uh, well, we didn't create an SDK for glass. Uh, we think that uh, uh, for Glass, you have to really think about uh, what is it that's going to trigger the experience and how are you going to trigger an experience. So there's two ways. It's, uh, okay, Glass scan this. If, uh, if they have the Layer app installed, it doesn't really matter what they're scanning and uh, what experience it is. Uh, it, it'll just work. So um, uh, they, will, they will scan. So you can create your content using our tools and our platform, our APIs, um, and uh, it, it'll work with, okay, Glass scan this. Uh, they don't have to install a specific app for that. Uh, it, it would be stupid if you'd have to say, uh, OK, Glass, scan this with my app, or OK, Glass, scan this with this other app, or OK, Glass, scan this. So really, we're trying to uh, uh, make sure that, that there's, there's a limited set of commands on Glass and, and something like scan. We've registered scan this as a, as a generic command. Uh, Google is uh, currently in the process of approving it. Uh, and a lot of apps could be using the same command, actually. And uh, uh, whatever app can actually handle it, it will, it will start that app. Um, so you can, you can open uh, a visual um, a vision layer. You can also open a geo-based uh, uh, experience, as you saw in the video. Uh, and if you want to um, use the Mirror API, that can be done because you can push content to the user using the Mirror API of, uh, of Google. And uh, when you push content, you just push a little card. And if the card has a link in there, it will start the experience. Uh, and the link could be a simple uh, layer intent link or actually the AR uh, colon slash slash intent link, uh, which we uh, uh, announced yesterday as uh, that allows interoperability, uh, that will work as well. So that's interoperable with uh, uh, Wikitude as well as uh, Metaio. <clears throat> so what works well? Uh, pages with one call to action. 
basically, if there's one call to action on the page and you scan this, it'll work uh, because it's just simple. It's a matter of saying scan this and it will start the interaction. Uh, video, audio, that works well. Um, or an image linking to a GLA, as you show in the example, showing a 3D panorama of something. Uh, that works pretty well. Uh, what doesn't work well is, um, is actually pages with multiple items of content because a user cannot select which content he wants to see. Uh, so you can swipe through it, but it's not ideal uh, in Glass. You, you don't have a touch screen to, to touch things. And the other thing that doesn't work well is a full 3D AR. Uh, it's just not really uh, an AR device. It's, uh, it's really a little, little screen in the corner of your, of your eye. Uh, so you'd think that this would be, for example, even, even simple augmentations like that. You'd overlay uh, um, things on top of the reality and that this is what you see. But remember, with glass, this is what you see. Uh, you're seeing a little screen on the corner of your eye. Uh, so always think of these kind of things when you're creating experiences for glass. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dirk. And uh, a couple questions? All right. Uh, I have the uh, Lair app already si side loaded onto this glass, so uh, I've, I've used it for some time since you guys first came, came out with it. Um, just some quick things. Uh, it, uh, are you planning at some point in time in the future to have, have it be able to register a login so that way when you're creating content, uh, you don't have to publish it before you could view it in glass. Is that maybe one, one of the areas that you're looking into? Uh, well, yeah, you can view it on, in the app. You have a login, obviously, to, so that you can actually view your content before, uh, before it's being published. Uh, actually, content that you create either using our Connect API or using the creator, you can actually temporarily publish it by hitting the test button, and that content is actually visible also on Glass while it's in that testing mode. But as soon as you close it, it will not be uh, visible anymore until you publish it. It's a little bit difficult to do a login on Glass. Uh, but yeah, we, we've been thinking of it, for example, with a QR code that you, we'd show you a QR code on the website, you'd scan that QR code that would enable, uh, that would log you in, and then you'd be able to test your content, yeah. But I'd, I'd advise you to just test it on, on a device, or to actually go into the testing mode on the layer creator or using the Connect API, you can actually set it to test mode. Okay, that's definitely good to know. And, and, and like you said, it's the informational content around it uh, that's most useful, not the true AR content, because sometimes when you're looking at something in the corner of your eye through it, it doesn't work out as, as well. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I think people look at you in a strange way if, you, if you're looking through, the, through that corner <laughs> of, of the glass and trying to... <laughs> Yeah. But 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 the it it works pretty well. The the only other thing is that uh, it keeps on uh, getting knocked out every time Google does decides to do to do an update, a software update or so. so. That's true. It's still pretty unstable as mm -hmm. a platform to develop for. Yeah. And another question. All right, I'll have one uh, real quick. Uh, how many um, layers do you have that support Glass right now? Uh, that's difficult. I mean, a actually, all the content that we have on our LA platform uh, would be supported on uh, on Glass. Uh, obviously, some are better uh, suited for Glass than others. Uh, we have uh, about 12,000 published geo layers, uh, which all work on Glass. And we have, uh, in terms of vision pages, that's a bit difficult to say, but we have about 400,000 different pages that are augmented with layer and that actually can be scanned with uh, using Google Glass. Great. Uh, one more. Last question. Do you have a way to designate whether content should be viewed on glass or on a mobile device so you could cross develop? Maybe develop something that's more full AR for like a mobile phone or and then have the same content but developed for the different viewing experience and a way to designate which one to give the viewer? Uh, no, actually, we, we don't have that uh, available, for example, that you could take a box. I, I want to show this one on Glass, and I want to show this one on Android. Uh, we have that in our back end. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, as a staff, I can actually select uh, that content is actually designated. Uh, the main reason for that was that uh, the augmented uh, Playboy magazine should only be available on Android and not on Apple, because Apple doesn't like it. Uh, due to the nature of the content, uh, but uh, it's something that we could easily do, and we're thinking of uh, how how we would do that and, and communicate that to our developers. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dirk.